Hi, I'm Camille, Solutions Technician at Candrum. Thank you for purchasing or renting the Zenmuse L1. In this video, we're gonna go over best practices from using the L1. Mission planning is essential to the success of drone operations. So we'll be using the DJI Pilot app on your smart controller to plan our LiDAR mission. Start off by importing a KML for the area of interest. You can do this by loading the KML file on a micro SD card from your computer and inserting it into the smart controller. This step is completely optional, but helpful to ensure we capture the correct area. Select Mission Flight. Select KML Import. Select Mapping Mission. Select the external micro SD storage. Select the KML file. Once imported, the KML will show up in your library as a mission. Select the mission and DJI Mission Planner will automatically create a mapping mission based on the KML area. One thing to note is you will want to change the maximum flight distance in the flight control settings in order to prevent any errors going forward. We find that 1500 meters is appropriate. Now that we've defined the area of interest, it's time to modify the mission parameters. Ensure that the payload type is the Zenmuse L1 LiDAR mission. Ensure that the altitude mode is relative to takeoff point. The recommended flight route altitude for the L1 is 50 to 100 meters above ground, but we find that 80 meters above ground is a good middle ground in terms of efficiency. The recommended flight speed for the L1 is 10 meters per second. If you're trying to fly over dense vegetation to get ground points, we recommend flying at a speed a little bit slower, 6 meters per second. In the advanced settings, we recommend a 50% slide overlap. In payload settings, you can set the number of returns, scan mode, and RGB colorization. In an urban environment with bare surface, you can use the single strongest return, and in a vegetated environment where you're trying to get ground points, triple return is recommended. We set our scan mode to repeat mode to get the best accuracy. And finally, if you're wishing to colorize your point cloud, enable RGB coloring. The point cloud density parameter will help approximate the amount of ground points you can get per meter squared with the settings we input. Save your mission and you are ready to head into the field. It's important to note that the L1 LiDAR requires an IMU calibration every 100 seconds of flight. The system will automatically account for and perform calibration at the beginning and the end of the flight, but calibrating the L1 entails the aircraft decelerating and accelerating. The maximum flight line length before calibration is required is dependent on your flight speed. Theoretically, if you plan a mission flying at 10 meters per second, your flight line should be under 1,000 meters. If you were flying at five meters per second, the max length for your flight line should be under 500 meters. The yellow lines in the mission planner indicate the areas where the system will not collect LiDAR data. The acceleration and deceleration during these turns will help calibrate the IMU. DJI is currently working on a new firmware update in order to automate calibration requirements, but in the meantime, if you cannot keep your flight lines under the relevant distance, we recommend that you break down your flights into multiple missions or adjust the course angle so that the flight distances are shorter. When you are on location, the first thing we want to do is set up the DRTK base station. Set the base station over a known survey point. Input the WGS84 ellipsoidal coordinates into the DRTK advanced settings and be sure to account for that 1.8 meter antenna height. Alternatively, you can use the network RTK to provide corrections. Now that we've set up the DRTK, we can prepare the aircraft for flight. Be sure to run through your pre-flight checklist, ensuring that the Matrice 300 is ready and safe for flight. The L1 requires a five minute warm-up period before executing the mission. The smart controller will notify you when the system is ready. We recommend that you enable the M300's beacon system in the manual flight app to increase the visibility of the aircraft during the operation. When everything is ready, tap the play icon to start the mission. You want to ensure that the drone and RTK have adequate GPS coverage. Upload the mission and fly. During the mission, you should always keep an eye on the aircraft. Monitor the power levels remaining on the drone and watch out for any hazards. Processing L1 data requires DJI Terra. Start off by pulling the micro SD card from the L1. The card has individual mission folders that contain everything required to process the raw data into point clouds. 
You should always back up the raw mission folders and create a copy of the missions for processing. In DJI Terra, select LiDAR reconstruction and select the project folder for the data we want to process. In order to get the best accuracy out of the L1, you'll want to enable optimized point cloud accuracy and note that the feature requires Terra Pro or electricity versions. To start processing, hit the Start Process button. Congratulations, you have now processed your first data set. The output LES file can now be loaded into the point cloud software of your choice for further processing. We recommend using Ladder 360 software suite, which will allow you to do things like remove outliers, extract ground points, and do an accuracy assessment. Please contact us if you wish to learn more about Ladder360. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials.